you. Me and you. You love her? Sure. Sure. I love her. You don't sound very convincing. Well, I never claimed to be a poet, Dad. Well, what do you see in her? What do you mean? What she got as a human being, Lou. Oh, well, she's bright. Got a good sense of humor. And she's good to look at. What else? Oh, come on, Dad. You know I can't put that in words. Oh, yes, you can. Now, what made you go for her? Well, it's kind of the way I can unload on her, you know? Tell her everything, anything that bugs me. Huh? Well, that's good. That's very important, Lou. Dad, I know this is tough on you and Mom. Believe me, I didn't want it to happen this way. Well, it did happen this way, and you could have let it happen any way you wanted. The, uh, the night I came back from New York, I wanted to step off that plane and uh, stand on the first step of the ramp, look off, see you and Mom standing out there waiting for me, and then I was going to step aside and let Vicky come out and say, uh, what kind of point to her and say, hey, dig this. Why didn't you? Well, I, I figured it'd be too much of a shock. <laughs> yeah, how about that? Figured that would be a, not, a lot less of a shock than this. By about 900 degrees. Dad, what are we going to do? Stand here and argue about whether or not I love Vicky? I mean, would I marry a girl that I didn't love? If you felt you had to, yes, you would. You're throwing your life away, Lou. Dad, Vicky and Mom are downstairs just staring at each other. Uh, why don't we go downstairs and make it easier on them? You don't love that girl. Why don't we go downstairs, Dad? Didn't you hear what I said? I said you don't love her. A man that's in love, he shouts it out, Lou. He don't keep it inside. He yells it to the whole town. Oh, I don't know what kind of a father I am right now, but boy, I want to slap you. Well, maybe you should. Maybe it make you feel better. Yeah, I want to slap you silly. But no, I... I've been living in Mr. Charlie's world too long, Lou. I can't react instinctively anymore. My hand won't make a fist. That's too bad. I mean, maybe it'd be better for you and me, you know, kind of a one-punch fight. Is that what this is all about, Lou? Huh? Is that what it is? You, you look for the biggest trouble you can find so you can get punished for it? What's wrong with you? You're some kind of mixed-up teenager? You're one of those kids who needs a doctor? <laughs> I don't need a doctor. My son, Lou. Whatever you want to do is okay with me. You can get married, live under this roof, start out any way you want. We'll give you all the help you want. But something inside me is gnawing and telling me that something is wrong here. Something is wrong. Why don't we go downstairs, Dad? Yeah. Why don't we do that, huh? That was a no-no. Mary O'Neill. Might be my analyst. Susan. Yeah? Mr. Cord's residence, this is the Queen of the Nile speaking. Mary, listen, this is Phil James. Phil? Yeah, Stephen. That was a very funny friend of mine. Ha uh -huh. Hold on a moment. The Phil, I've been trying to reach you. There's something I've got to know. Have you heard anything about Peyton's estate? Yes. What kind of rumors? Oh, now, come on, Phil. Stop playing innocent. Have you heard anything? Anything about the condition of the estate? Not a thing. Well, maybe I'm just seeing something that isn't there. Nothing serious. You've got me interested. Hmm. 
What's the matter with you? Let them come to you. Susan, you don't do things like that. Yes, I do. Mary. Stephen, I'm not going to stand by and watch you get hurt. You are driving me to the airport. You're going to get clobbered. Mary, pack me a suitcase. For how many nights, sir? Just for tonight, but put an extra change in there. Yes, sir. I'm not exactly a novice in the business world. That's not the point. The point is you're walking into something blindly. You know, Stephen, my grandfather used to spend every Sunday poring over combat histories of World War II. And just before dinner, he would slam a book shut and he'd look up and say to no one in particular, that darn fool general. He just walked right into an enemy position with his flanks exposed. That's you. You're a darn fool general. All right, all right. But there's a time for a confrontation. Of course there is. When you are ready and you know enough about it. I can handle Bill Kennerly. An old line Boston attorney who spent a lifetime in your grandfather's vest pocket? He's vulnerable. The estate is vulnerable. I'm onto something and I intend to crack it wide open. How? By walking into Bill Kennerly's office and saying, um, say, Bill, do me a favor, tell me what's going on. Oh, why not? Because you're not objecting to the absence of money. Betty is. And Bill Kennerly and all the bankers and accountants must understand that. There won't be any misunderstandings. I'm going to find out where the money is. I have the right to know. <sighs> you're so stubborn. Yes, I am. Well, then you better take me with you. I want to be there to pick up the pieces. No chance. You're going to need me. When I get back, I have to make sure that the money is out of Betty's reach. You come back to me? I live here. That's right. I've been waiting for you. Norman, what do you want? What happened? He's had a relapse. He's back in the hospital. I know that. I just came from the hospital. Now, what happened to Rod? They don't know for sure yet. They haven't completed all the tests. Dr. Rossi said they can't seem to find anything physically wrong with him so far. Norman, please. Dr. Rossi said it could have been some kind of an emotional shock. Norman, I'm tired. You're tired? My brother's lying over there in the hospital paralyzed, and I want to know why. Please leave me alone. Not until you give me some answers. You act as if you know all the answers. I just want you to tell me how come my brother's right back where he was after the accident. Only this time he didn't have to fall off a motorbike. All I needed to put him in the hospital was you. Norman, I've... I've had a terrible day. Would you please leave? It didn't take you long, did it? Just a couple of days, and he's right back in the hospital. Get out. How'd you do it, Betty? How'd you put the whammy on him? Stop it. You tell me what happened and tell me why he can't move. I would tell you why if I knew. But it all happened so suddenly, you see, Stephen. What about Stephen? He brought us the news. What news? That something was terribly wrong. Wrong with the estate. You mean the money's frozen or something? I don't know. There may not even be any money. What I mean is that your sister-in-law may not be an heiress after all. Isn't that amusing? Yeah, I bet you just about died laughing. Was that when you let him have it? When you told him the truth about why you married him? Or did he figure it out all by himself when he saw the way you took the news? Get out. Let's hear it all, Betty. What'd you do, flip out? It must have been quite a show. But don't you understand? That inheritance means a great deal to us. That's a lot of money to be cheated out of. So you let Rod believe that money means more to you than your marriage? You believe that, don't you? I mean, I just can't convince you that the reason I married your brother was because I love him. It doesn't matter about me. It's Rod. What does he believe? He doesn't believe me either. That's why he's back in that hospital. Have I said everything you wanted to hear?
preview from the continuing story of Peyton Place. We're going to fight you, and there's no way you can win. I'm marrying Lou. I'm marrying Lou no matter what, and you can do what you want. How could you talk your grandfather into writing a new will? I am going to fight you, Stephen. I never should have let your mother divorce me. I need to be with her. I need to be with you, both of you. I need to have my family back. 